to start to explore the problems that our thinking that our dates are characters can cause us, even if our dates are in the ISO format. Let's plot up our data and see how R works with dates that are formatted as characters. So we will use the qplot command, which is part of ggplot2. The, our x-axis will be our date. Y-axis is the air temperature coming from the weather station from this neon site. Um, uh, our data is our, the data from our daily data frame. And let's just give it a title. Let's run this. And if we look at the data, uh, what we see is, uh, in general, what a very, a very nice looking time series. This is daily data for several years. So what we have is uh, increases in daily air temperature through the summer and then uh, declines into the winter. And then again, these kind of seasonal cycles of air temperature as we go from one year to the next, which is exactly what we would expect to see for air temperature in a temperate uh, zone site. The x-axis looks a little weird. Other than that, everything looks really good. Here's the thing that will really blow your mind. This is not a continuous time series. I took out an entire year of data. Do you see a gap in the time series? Do you see anywhere that a, an entire year of data is missing? What's going on here is that because R does not understand that these are dates, it does not understand that there's anything missing. It is treating each one of these things as just a label associated with a, with a point. The computer goes through and it assumes that each one of these date labels should be the same distance apart from each other. And so when it tries to plot these, it doesn't understand that there's a big chunk of dates that are missing and that that spacing between two subsequent dates is actually should be different um, than between two other dates. And so when you plot this data, it's not going to space out those dates, what we think of as the correct distances apart. And that's what's causing us problems. And it can cause you big problems in understanding what's actually going on in your data when you try and plot it or work with it um, in any way. We have to have a way to tell the computer that this is a date and that these dates have a very specific relationship to each other so that it is working with dates the same way that we work with dates. To do this, we have to reformat that date column and make the computer recognize it as a completely different class of thing. How do we do that? We use a function called as date. So I'm going to type in daily. And I'm going to create a new column in my data file that is called formatted date. Oops, that is not formatted. Formatted underscore date. I am going to use the as date function and you can see our studio pops up all sorts of helpful information about as date. So we'll give it as date. Tell it which column we want it to be formatting, which is the column date. We're going to autocomplete that and let's run this. Okay, no errors in our console. So let's look at our data. Type in head daily dollar sign. There's our formatted date. We're going to run that. It doesn't look any different. It's very anticlimactic. <laughs> I'm sorry. This doesn't look any different, but that's fine. Our dates were already in the best format you could have. We just needed to tell the computer that. So let's see what the computer now thinks this is. So I'm going to give, give it the class command again, and I am going to ask what it thinks. Oops formatted date is. Let's run this line. And now instead of saying character, you can see down in the console that what R is telling us is that it now sees that our dates are something very different. And it's a category of object that is called a date object. The way R understands them is now very different. How different? Let's do our plot again and see what happens now when we ask it to plot this information with the dates actually being recognized as dates instead of characters. Let's type in qplot. X equals formatted date this time. Autocomplete. Y still equals air t. 
data equals daily. So it knows where to find the data that I'm telling it to plot. And we'll give it temp with formatted date. It's a long title, but we'll survive. And now let's run this. And now you can clearly see that gap in the data that I snuck in. Um, and you can see that the computer actually now understands this relationship between these dates. It hit that last day of 2004, and it understood that the next data entry wasn't until January of 2006. And so when it displays this information to us, it displays it the way we would expect it to be displayed with the fact that there's a 12 month gap between one of our data points and the next data point. In our next segment, we're going to explore uh, in more detail how we tell the computer to format dates, how we tell it to recognize dates, um, and uh, particularly when dates might be coming in that wide array of formats that we explored in the first segment.